This week on ILNLC, we bring you a snapshot of the blessing of the animals, interviews with the stars of Babes in Arms, a look behind the scenes of the Remembrance Flag in Shul, international news, sports, and the weather. Hello everyone, I'm Caroline Moore. Thanks for being with us. The Extraordinary Women Conference was held this past Friday and Saturday at the Vine Center at Liberty University. The conference attracted many star speakers including author Donna Van Leer and former Alaskan Governor Sarah Palin. The event was a landmark success drawing CNN to the scene and selling out online tickets. Tuesday evening was a special moment for proud pet owners. Reverend McLemore held an animal blessing and friendship circle allowing students and faculty to bless their beloved furry friends. We bring you a special look at this event with our Critograph companion piece for this week. Well, I'm Caroline Moore from ILNLC and here we have Reverend McLemore and she is the chaplain here at Lynchburg College. Right. So how often do you do this every year? We have this service every year on, um, usually on October 4th, the feast day of St. Francis. Okay, and is it every year? We have it every year. Um, it's one of our favorite things to do. It's low preparation and high fun. Um, wonderful. Uh, do you normally just have dogs and cats or is it a wide range of animals? We usually have dogs and cats. Um, last year the goldfish from the writing center came. Um, we've had threats by faculty and staff to bring their farm critters. Um, the uh, April scrugs in the Health Center is always telling me she's going to bring her donkeys, and I haven't been able to get the equestrian team to rally yet. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And is it normally just teachers who bring their animals, or do students bring them? We as well? invite students to bring um, pictures of their animals, and we had a couple here today that had uh, pictures of animals at home, and also folks who have brought who have lost animals in the last year. Okay. That can be a hard thing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. For that. You're welcome. Thank you for being with us today. You can read more about this story in the latest issue of The Critograph. And now an update on the situations in the Middle East and Africa from Becca Loftus. Becca? Hi, I'm Becca Loftus with your international news. The end of the fighting in Libya draws closer as anti-Gaddafi forces reaching the final stages of taking Sir, Gaddafi's hometown. About 10 people were killed with more than 100 injuries in the fighting this weekend. A local hospital filled with civilians acts as one of the last pro-Gaddafi strongholds in Sir. Upon control of Sirte, the National and Transitional Council plans on announcing the liberation of Libya. The trial is set to begin of two men accused of killing white supremacist leader Eugene Terreblanche in South Africa. Terreblanche is the leader of the neo-Nazi Afrikaner resistance movement who was killed after an argument with his workers on farm about wages. Terreblanche was stabbed with a machete and bludgeoned with clubs resulting in his death. Chris Manlugu, 29, and a 16-year-old have been charged. Tara Blanche was convicted of a 1996 attempted murder and served two-thirds of his five-year sentence. Yemen President Ali Abdullah Saleh announced that he would step down in the coming days if a power transition agreement is reached with Gulf Cooperation Council. Spokesman Abdu Gennady stated that Saleh is not power-hungry and can step down any time if he wishes. Massive protests are spreading throughout Yemen asking Saleh to step down. Lastly, the presidents of South Sudan and Sudan have announced that they will not go back to war. South Sudan President Saleh Kiir visited the capital of Sudan as a way of showing the peace between the two countries. South Sudan became independent in July after two decades of civil war resulting in 1.5 million people dead. However, there were still disagreements about the borders of the two countries. That's all for international news. Back to you, Caroline. Thank you for the updates, Becca. In other local news, a collaborative project, Babes in Arms, was a running success this weekend. The musical showcased students' talent along with local professionals from the Academy of Fine Arts. Let's turn to our own Elizabeth Cantrell, who has some words from the stars themselves. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Cantrell with ILC here at the Academy of the Arts, the site of a special collaborative effort between Lynchburg College's theater department and the Academy of the Arts. Also the site of Babes in Arms, which premiered this Wednesday night and is playing up until, what was playing up until Sunday at 2 o'clock. What do you think was your favorite part of the whole musical, working on it backstage or the production itself? 
just the kind of camaraderie that we gained as a cast. We became such a family. This is one of the first shows where I've liked every single person in the show, and we all, we really are like a family. It's going to be really sad when this ends on Sunday. What would you say is your favorite part of the musical? Uh, just hearing the audience laugh. That's the best part. I mean, that's what we're trying to do. So every time they laugh, that's just, you know, check on our list. A lot of the LC cast this year are freshmen, so they're fresh new faces. There are very few of the, quote, veterans left. And uh, so with the Academy, it was really neat to work with two different groups of people in one setting. This music was a little easier than some of the ones we've done. It's just very beautiful and lush, um, kind of some of the old classics. Um, but it is tricky kind of coordinating with the actors and making sure that the cues are there and that we're all on the same page, so to speak. But um, yeah, we did pretty good. I know that the theater department puts on one big production every semester. Can you give us a hint about what the next one's going to be? I sure can. <laughs> the one coming up in January and February now is uh, the Miss Firecracker Contest. And it's a funny play by a Southern playwright named Beth Henley. We do have a very unique piece, though, coming up just in a few weeks at Homecoming Weekend. And it's called Almost Maine. It's a romantic comedy that's very intimate and small. And that'll be done in the Dillard uh, Theater on campus. With INLC, I'm Elizabeth Cantrell. Back to you, Caroline. Thank you, Elizabeth. Also in the world of arts, we have some behind-the-scenes interviews with the LC students behind the high-flying remembrance display in Shul. Teddy LaMotta brings us more. Hi, I'm Ted LaMotta, and I'm here with Deanna Hodge. She uh, just created the crane American flag that is hanging up in Shul. So what, gave you, what inspired you to uh, create this giant flag of paper cranes? In Japanese culture, the making of a thousand paper cranes grants a wish. So I wanted to wish that um, the victims of the souls of 9-11 find peace. How many people did it take, uh, how, how many people were you working with to create this flag? I had a lot of people making paper cranes, from everyone from my housemates to my older brother to people in the class. So it was a complete joint effort between a lot of, a lot of different people. Yeah, That's a lot of different people. Which class was this for? It's an independent study in art and it's called Design 3. It's based mainly around environmental art and installation art. Uh, so the class is a good time already? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Can uh, the rest of Lynchburg College's campus look forward to seeing any other great installations around? Yes, look forward to seeing a lot. Will they only be in Chul or, could we, or are they going to be found all around campus? All around campus. I'm looking forward to seeing them all. And thank you very much for meeting with us. No problem. Thanks, Teddy. Well, now I'm Justin Bryputin. Take it away with sports. Justin? What's up, LC? Justin Bryputin here with your weekly update in the world of sports. The number four ranked field hockey team took on Virginia Wesleyan College Tuesday, October 4th, and won by the score of 10 to 0. Seven different players scored from the Hornets, including four goals from Lindsey Leonard, Christina Morris, Deanna Smith, Ashley Nelson, Tara Rayner, Shelly Milks, and Colleen Dort each added one goal. The record stands at 10 and 1 on the year with a 4 0 ODAC record. The men's soccer team lost to Randolph College Wednesday, October 5th, by the score of 2-1 in overtime. Randolph struck first 22 minutes into the first half and had the, held the lead for the most of the game. Kyle Simzak tied the game with less than seven minutes left in the game to take it to overtime. Randolph ended the game only nine minutes into overtime. Now let's go to Kestrel for a sideline interview with Coach Yeager. Hi, I'm Kestrel Curl, and I'm joined by head coach of the men's soccer team, Coach Yeager. Coach, thanks for joining us today. No problem. Your team showed a lot of will and determination in getting that goal in the last few minutes of the game, but they had a lot of opportunities and they didn't quite convert them. What, what went wrong today? I don't know. You tell me. Um, yeah, I mean, we played well. Like you said, had a lot of chances, didn't finish. Um, and they finished well when it was important. So, yeah. tough game. You guys didn't get off to the fastest start, I'm sure, that you wanted. But this team just screams resilience. Mm -hmm. What do you think is going to be the key to get that resilient postseason push? Well, we have to get there first. That's the big thing. Um, in the ODAC right now, it's kind of crazy, and, and uh, we just hope that uh, we can get everything clicking at one time. So if you have the answers, let me know. It would be nice. All right, thank you so much for your time. No Good luck this season. Thanks. The team then took on Washington and Lee Saturday, October 8th, and finished in a 0-0 tie. The volleyball team played Hollins College Wednesday, October 5th, and won 3-1. The team then traveled to Atlanta for the Emory National Tournament. They beat Piedmont College in straight sets 3-0, with Eric L. Payne leading the way with 10 kills. The Hornets then lost to Maryville 3-0, with Payne leading the team with 12 kills. 
The ladies then lost to third-ranked Emory University in straight sets 3-0 and then lost to Ohio Northern University 3-1. The men's lacrosse team played an exhibition game against UVA, the Division I national champions, on Thursday, October 6. The Hornets held the lead <coughs> going into halftime 7-6, but the Cavaliers took the lead in the, in the second half and won the game 13-9. Max Vomard had two goals with Ben Sauer adding two assists, while goalie Frank Cook had 13 saves. Other news and notes, the MLB playoffs have reached the division championships with the Rangers playing the Tigers and the Cardinals playing the Brewers, and the NHL season is underway, but there's sti still no decision on whether the NBA will have a season or not. That's it for me. I'm Justin Raputin. Back to you, Caroline. Thank you, Justin. With temperatures in the 70s, it's hard to believe it's really October, but how long can we go without our jackets and long sleeves? Let's turn to Billy Orndorff to see more. Last week was a gorgeous week as a high-level system sat over us, keeping the week nice and sunny. This week, we will be in a shake-up from the week before, as we see a low pressure, which will bring up rain from the south. Monday, we will begin to see the clouds roll in closer to the end of the day. This will set up a high in the upper 70s and a low in the mid-50s. Tuesday is when we see the frontal boundary coming up from the south, which will give us the rain. Uh, the rain will cause our high to decrease to the low 70s, and the low will be in the mid-50s. Wednesday, the rain will be sticking around and will drop our high into the upper 60s. Thursday, we will begin to see the rain ending and our high in the low 70s, with a low in the mid-40s. Friday will be in the upper 60s with mostly sunny skies, and then Saturday, we will be seeing beautiful weather as the sun will be out most of the day and our high will be in the upper 60s. This has been Chief Forecaster Billy Orndorff with your INLC forecast. Would you like to get your daily weather forecast on Facebook? If you do, then make sure you like INLC weather for your daily weather updates. Back to you, Caroline. And that's the way it is with INLC for this week, but don't forget to tune in to our hit show, Dorm Dining on a Dime. Thank you and have a wonderful week.